uh, two, four. They call them inverse operations. So inverse operations. A lot of people, when they see that word inverse, a lot of them in their mind, inverse and opposite are kind of the same things. That an opposite operation is going to undo something. Technically, that's what an inverse operation is. So I'm going to start off by just saying, okay, inverse operations, they're going to undo each other. So they undo each other. A lot of times people will re kind of refer to those as being opposites. The other way I'm going to say that, they undo each other, or maybe you could say they get you back to where you started. So get you back to where you started. So perhaps a good example would be something like this. Let's say I felt wealthy and huh, I actually had money. Unfortunately, I only have a 20. So um, take someone I trust. And so Tyler here, I'm going to give him $20 in theory. Uh, so if I give Tyler $20, I just added $20 to the amount that he has, right? So you could say, well, for an example, maybe plus 20 would be like one thing. What would be the inverse of adding 20? Minusing 20. So addition and subtraction, me taking my money back, gets Tyler back to, gets Tyler back to the same amount place where he started. He had a certain amount of money, he suddenly had $20 more, and then you take away the $20, he's right back to where he started. So addition and subtraction are going to be inverse operations. They get you back where you started. If you have one person, say, you're walking four steps forward, the inverse of walking four steps forward would be to walk four steps backwards gets you right back to where you were when you started. So examples you could put down things like um, adding 20, subtracting 20. Maybe four steps forward. So four steps forward. And four steps backwards. That if you do that, you should end up in the exact same spot. Um, if we're talking about like multiplication, the inverse of multiplication is going to be division. Nice. You know, if you have, I don't know, if my wife grew twice as many green beans this year as she did last year, you know, then if you divided by two, that would get you back to where she started, you know, the next year. So multiplication division are going to be inverses. So all of those things are inverses. And that's not real clear in the notes, I realize now. But um, you can maybe say, like, you can squeeze in there, like, inverses maybe at the top. So inverses. So inverses would be, like, adding 20. That's supposed to be the little ampersand, the little and symbol. And subtracting 20. Four steps forward and four steps back. What the book likes to do, and maybe this would help too, the book likes to give you problems something like this. They call it an inverse machine, and it's kind of related to what you guys were doing, that they have a little circle, and that's where you'd put your first number. Then they'll say something like, okay, to get from this number to the next number, we're going to add three. Then that'll get me to my second number. And if I want to take and change this to a third number, somebody give me a nice number to multiply by. So multiply... I heard 10 first. We'll say multiply by 10 is going to get me to a third number. Fair enough? Well, if we want to take and get back to where we started, to shrink that a little bit, what's going to be the inverse of multiplying by 10? Go for it, Kitty. Divide by 10. So if we want to get back to our beginning point, we could say, all right, now here I'm going to divide by 10. And you agree that should get me back to this number right here? Because to multiply by 10 gets me here. Dividing by 10 should get me back to that second number. Now what's my last step going to be to undo this first one? Minus Go for it. 3. Minus 3. That if I subtract 3, that should get me back to that very first number. And if you pick any number and put it in there, as long as you don't mess up your math, that should work. So Aaron, give me a number. Uh, 5. So if we take an, I'm going to put a 5 in there first. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 times 10 is 80. 80 divided by 10 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. 
You know, so we started over here with a five. We ended with a five. That we have like a machine that kind of undoes itself, which is kind of a worthless machine when you think about it. But should we try it with another number, or are you a believer? Yeah, I'm good. Another number would be? No, I'm good. 37. 37. Okay, that works. If we were to put a 37 in there, 37 plus 3 is? 40. 40. 40 times 10 is? 400. Still with me? 400 divided by 10 is 40. 37. 40 minus 3 is 37. We got right back where we started, agreed? Mm -hmm. This here is just kind of like the first section where we talk about inverses. We're going to take and kind of apply this to much more normal math stuff soon. But for now, the homework just kind of goes through doing like some of these inverse machine things like this with the circles and what's going to be the inverse of adding 40. It would be subtracting 40. So check out the homework. Let me know if you're stuck.